Today's episode is brought to you by SeatGeek, our presenting sponsor, who just launched a fantastic new feature called SeatGeek Marketplace. It's a new feature. They've always allowed you to buy great tickets for sporting events and concerts, but starting now, you can also sell your tickets, and selling the tickets is simple and easy. You won't get hijacked by ridiculous after-the-sale costs that other sites charge. Go to SeatGeek.com slash BS to learn how to buy and sell tickets on SeatGeek. Today's episode is also brought to you by Simply Safe, the best way to protect your home without writing huge checks or signing long-term contracts with no way out. I mean, seriously, why wouldn't you want a home security system that gives you 24 seven protection for just $14.99 per month? That's less than half what most companies charge. Visit simplysafebill.com and get an exclusive offer for 10% off. Finally, a home security system you can trust. Again, that's simplysafebill.com. Mm. The cuz. Yeah. Yes. Clear enough for you. For the first time <laughs> in 2015, <laughs> we are doing a BS podcast after a Cowboys win. Congratulations. Unbelievable. Yes, we missed the first two because we didn't do it in September. And yeah, it, it doesn't feel right. It doesn't feel like I should be here. Do you want to, can, is there anything else you could be sad about? Because you normally you're in a Monday fog slash sadness slash haze slash no. whatever. Now, now you seem uplifted. I did all right with my bets and, and, and Romo's back. And I would say even a, a below average performance for him and still a double digit win on the road. That's, that's pretty good. He looked dicey in the first half. Yeah. He looked a little rusty. Didn't really matter. Well, listen, when we Miami. were suspended last year for uh, th the first three or four times we were suspended last year, <laughs> we came back. We were rusty, right? We were calling Reggie Cobb, Randall Cobb, and back. The I'm other still way doing that. Still That's not fair. That. Yeah. Yeah. But um, you're having ideas. If you beat good. the Panthers, you're four and seven. We'll have to talk about that. You get to play the Panthers on on a Thursday. They have four days rest. Right. You, you can't ask for a better time to play them. Right. And we're at Green Bay. Otherwise, we we should you know we should take care of business. But we do have to win one or both of those games for sure. You could get to nine and seven. You scoffed at this last week. Yeah, I still think there's a loss in there somewhere. But the Giants, it's Tyron the, Smith had his worst game of the year, uh, and we still, we still, like I said, won by double digits. The defense didn't give up any points in the fourth quarter. It is, it is exciting to have a, a full team back. Yesterday was actually a very interesting football day, and and I enjoyed it from beginning to end, which I can't say I did yeah. most of the time. But there were good games. All the early games, we had a couple late enders that were fun. Green Bay, Minnesota was an old school Rodgers performance. That was it, that, right? You know, all, for weeks I'd been waiting for him to be Rodgers, and I'd been waiting for Minnesota to turn into a pumpkin. Mm -hmm. And then it happened, and of course I had picked Minnesota, and and, and thankfully not actually wagered money on them, but right. you could kind of feel it. The last two minutes of the first half was when the game flipped. Yeah, Bridgewater gets hurt. Rodgers comes down, gets the go-ahead touchdown. They, they had that play where it seemed like there was going to be a holding penalty, then all of a sudden it was offsetting penalties, and then all of a sudden they're throwing a touchdown. James Jones is starting to really bother me. He, you don't like the I hood. just don't understand how he's always open. He's got a hoodie on. Can't somebody just yank how him from does the hoodie? He have a hoodie on in this day and age. You get you get fined for uh, putting R.I.P. when your mother dies the day before. <laughs> I know. You get get to wear a hoodie. He's well, more Rocky Rocky Three. What happens right. when somebody tackles him from behind with the hoodie and yeah. like basically decapitates him? Right. I know. Do they ban the hoodies? I keep thinking it's dreadlocks. Every time I look up, I'm like, what? He grew this hoodie did dreadlocks he do? just over the week. He grew with these dreadlocks. This is insane. Yeah. But. I, you know, James Jones, Dayton Jones on defense, that, that defense was rock solid for Green Bay. It really just shows like, it's like, okay, it's cold. We're going to turn it on. Yeah. Eddie Lacy. So what? He's 75 pounds overweight. He's going to go out there. He's going to run He's so tough. fat. Did you, they had a slow motion yeah. of him at some point and, and his, his stomach was jiggling. <laughs> He should just embrace his Jerome Bettis. It's like watching point. Refrigerator Perry. Can't, call him the refrigerator. Yeah, I I was derisively calling him Fat Eddie <laughs> during the game, which I think should catch on. Fat Eddie, just Fat Eddie Lacy. Yeah, because we we did that with uh, our dog Olivia. We just called her Fat Olivia, and then when she we actually my wife actually started it started hurt her feelings. What did she tweet? Her, she tweeted that it was hurting her feelings. Or no, no, Olivia feel? didn't tweet that. My oh, wife, wife. My wife was mad. She was like, "Don't call her Fat Olivia. <laughs> she knows." It's like the dog's got an IQ of ten. There's she no knows, way she knows. There's a lot of therapy involved. So yeah. she changed her diet, and Olivia lost 
five pounds. Now we call her not so oh. for not so fat Olivia. I like that. So for Eddie Lacey, yeah. I think if we call him fat Eddie right now, but mm -hmm. then he loses the weight this summer. Call right. him not so fat Eddie. Oh, that's pretty good. Yeah. yeah. And then he beats the Patriots in the Super Bowl, and you're like, oh, what, did I, what have I done here? <laughs> Changed the whole system. I'm not that worried about the Packers. I got to be honest. I think this is what we we should have worried about. This is really what? this is a time of year they they heat up in the cold, and they're just they just showed like we're just tougher than everybody. That's it. Not the Patriots. I'm saying, but the NFC they're they're going to rise right there, and they're now competing for a uh, a buy. Rogers, <clears throat> that was the best player on the field game yesterday. Which I think happens from time to time. And and Peterson had to oh. be better than Rodgers was yeah. in that game. And Rodgers was just better. He made seven awesome plays that, yeah. you know, only three quarterbacks can make. And Peterson wasn't that great. Had a really big fumble at one point. I don't think there was ever a moment where we were like, oh, my God, Adrian Peterson. Yeah. Well, Lacey outrushed him 3-1. to one, And I think you have to get to that point playing the Vikings where – the Peterson 70 yard run is not going to hurt you. And, and the Packers always they kept you, that distance. They refuse to let it happen. Right. Bridgewater, um, he's not terrible. He can do a couple things. He's okay. He made he some was good under throws. He's a lot. Yeah. Yeah. I don't, I don't, I don't love him. I don't, I don't feel like when that, when you shut down Peterson like that, that Bridgewater could be like, all right, guys, I'm going to throw for 350 and three TDs. I mm -hmm. got this. He's not there yet. He right. might get there a year from now, but. Uh, it, once they fell behind, I just didn't think they were going to win. No. Did you? When they were no. down like 10, it was like, oh, man, no, they're not coming right. back from I that. almost knew right away. Like I, Even in the second quarter, I thought this was the Packers game. The we, important we thing, foolish. though, is Cordero Peterson showed Mason Crosby. Patterson. Cordero We're Patterson. Good. Yeah. <laughs> Cordero Patterson. Uh, he showed Mason Crosby. Yeah, he did. You know, I, I don't care about the 15-yard penalty. He proved his point. That was smart. Yeah. His point was, don't look at me after <laughs> I just had a great run or I'm going to come over and headbutt you. Exactly. And I thought, I don't know. I did, I'm going to defend we'll him never there. do that again, right? Yeah. Maybe Mason Crosby might have been the best player on the field yesterday. He's pretty good. Uh, the other, there's some really fun things that happened yesterday and then some disturbing things and then just some inexplicable things. One of which was Case Keenum Ugh. just got basically was in as bad a shape as the guy in the undercard in the Canelo Cotto fight. <laughs> right. The guy who just had to be like carried to his corner. Right. He, his, his line was trying to pull him up and it's like, he's a dead body who mm -hmm. just got fished out of the lake. Yeah. He staggers to his feet and they kept him in. And the NFL's made all this big deal the last couple of weeks about these guys in the stands with binoculars, these spotters. Mm -hmm. I know people have written about it, but in the moment, he was, he was clearly concussed. Nick Foles is already warming up on the sidelines. Right. And then Case Keenum kept playing. That was amazing. I think Jeff Fisher was more, way more concussed than Case Keenum at that point. Like, I don't understand. First of all, the last two minutes of these Ravens games, it's it's intense. All of, yeah. it, it's like the wire season three. Like, <laughs> really what are you gonna see? Is something gonna 10 be, straight games. Something cringeworthy you're gonna you're yeah. gonna come across. And so, all right, the Rams, I think they were up 13-3 or 16-3. No, 13-3. And pretty late, and then they tie their the Ravens tie it fourth and five from their own forty five. A minute left, it's tied. They go for it yeah. with Case Keenum under these circumstances. A concussed a, Case Keenum. A concussed Case Keenum. Your best case is that the the Rams defense somehow wins this game for you. Zerline, who used to be good, missed a field goal. Yeah. I don't understand why they went for it. And of course, they didn't make it. And then the Ravens and Joe Flacco, like. That might have been the best quarterback performance of all, like leading them down. You know, he only needed him a first down, but with the torn ACL, like not enough to said for that guy. He never misses a game, and now see, I now blame Flacco. You blame him for what? Because he knew he was hurt. I think oh. at that point he walks over to the coach and says, "Tell oh, yeah. Tucker to miss this. I blew up my ACL. We should go for the first pick." I see, but he didn't. He was selfish. <laughs> he screwed up. No, <laughs> yeah, I mean, he when it happened, it was clear something bad happened. Oh, yeah. And I was surprised they kept him on the field. They kept him in with no weapons, like Buck. Yeah, who was it? They have Buck Allen and Kamir uh, Aiken. Like what? What? Are, they're really. Uh, this well, is they like, lost, lost Perriman, their first round pick. They yeah. lost Steve Smith. Forsett Four broke his arm. Out. Ray Rice is still out. I don't think we're going to see him. Oh, either. we're not. Sorry. Yeah. yeah. And then Flacco. That's suddenly the worst team in the league, and that win was really bad for them. Yeah. Because I think there's two two win teams left. Tennessee. Is, and uh, uh, not San Francisco. Who is who is uh, San Diego? Can't. Well, San Diego's not going to win again. I don't think. 
I apologize to you too. I mean, you like the Chiefs yesterday. I did. I like the Chargers, and I, I said they just can't keep losing every game at home. It's sort of a revenge game. The Chiefs locked them out of the playoffs week 17 last year, and I apologize. They're they're just garbage. They just really they're are. too banged up. They have no home field advantage at all. And we were talking about it yesterday. It seems like that is now the most depressing home game in the league. Yeah, because it, it's there's always fans from the other team. The team's moving. You know, when you, I love who who do they have the rest of the way? They're gonna have a game where they have, but the okay, so maybe a hundred percent fans from the other team. It's so, one thing that oh, I they have, have Broncos, a, right? Okay, Broncos week twelve. How many Bronco fans are at that game? Sure, like a lot. Forty thousand. Yeah, but if you have if you have the Bears coming to town or, or the or the Steelers, I understand those those fans travel well, but. The Chiefs. The Chiefs. I saw the crowd. Someone sent me a, 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 a screen grab of the. It's all red. It's a sea of red. Did they fly the fans out there? Know. Like, what is going on now with the Chargers organization? It does so seem bad. like fans are just spread everywhere. That was one of my big takeaways from last week or yesterday was, you know, we've talked about a home field advantage doesn't matter, but you would have thought like, all right, Minnesota, Green Bay, mm -hmm. it's going to matter for this. These yeah. Viking fans are going to be crazy. Meanwhile, right. there's like 25,000 Packer fans. There. Right. It just doesn't seem like it matters anymore. And for every reason, I thought that was going to be a good home field advantage. It wasn't. Like, yeah, put them out in the cold, and Green Bay will start winning. And by the way, you just said we talked about. I've come, uh, to, think, I've come to realize it's impossible to have this hour-long discussion without saying we talked about. <laughs> just, uh, I'm sorry, <laughs> Phil Sims. We owe you an apology. We could well, say we've discussed or we threw, yeah. threw around. But One thing I've noticed, this is a new thing that I've gotten excited about, is how they talk about how they met somebody the night oh, yeah, before yeah. when he came to their meeting. Right. It got me thinking if we met with gambler like somebody from vegas he came to our meeting for the podcast yeah yeah right right. and then we brought him up today and we'd mm -hmm. be like well we talked to rj bell in our meeting last we night with him yeah they're very, always very excited to tell us that there was a meeting and that this person <laughs> passed through their lives briefly and yeah. they talked to him <laughs> yeah that's yeah, it. i don't really ever understand the, the yeah, we arrange it can so we, can we talk about talking yeah. about the greatest pay-per-view moment of all time what was that and I, I missed it for a second, but then it was sent to me like 25 times afterwards. Be better than Howard Stern's butt bongo fiesta or when Hogan slammed Andre was when you were caught, when you were acknowledged by the HBO cameras during the Alvarez fight. And you couldn't, uh, no one was ever happier to be on camera. <laughs> Did you, you remember I what to do? <laughs> yeah, no, I do. All of a sudden there was this cameraman next to me in the aisle. And they're like, we're going to put, we're going to show you. I'm like, okay. And then they show you and it's like, all right, do I look at the camera? Do I look away? <laughs> so apparently what you do is you look, you do like a thumbs up and then you just turn. Is that what you do? Yeah. But I didn't do that. I no. just stared at the camera halfway. Most of the guys, my two vodka Jay -Z, tonics in me. Yeah. Right. I mean, you're supposed to, you're supposed to be annoyed that you're there. Like you're, you're that, I think that's, I the was cool, really happy to be that's there. That's the cool way to do it. Like pretend you're in line at the DMV. That's what the camera's on you. But that camera, I think, how long would you have smiled at the camera? Like, I think well through the fight. I think if they kept it on, like, I didn't they're reading know what the to do. I froze. They're reading the scorecards. I think you're still, you're still smiling at the camera. <laughs> it, it, it was probably four seconds and it felt like 140. <laughs> I, I was just like, it. oh, please stop filming me, please. <laughs> that was so good. It, uh, so good. Yeah, I want to talk. We're going to talk about that when I get to, uh, there's okay. a specific point in the podcast I want to talk about that fight. Right. But I, we should mention the Bills play the Patriots tonight. And yes. I think the line is seven. It's probably going to creep to seven and a half before the game. And I had a parlay. You did Alvarez, the Seahawks, and the Panthers. Money line, right. I yeah. did Alvarez, Seahawks, Patriots. Mm-hmm. And now I have to decide whether I want to try to hedge with Tyrod Taylor and, and Buffalo and all this stuff. We do have our offensive line back for this game. Mm -hmm. It's a tough one. Why don't you tease? Do you think it's going to be a close game? What do you think? I do. I picked it as my best bet on ESPN. But, so you uh, think it's a 3.4 point game? I thought they shortened the game, the Bills, and they run the ball, and they're doing all the right things right now. And even better than all that, uh, Rex Ryan is underplaying everything. He's like almost giving the Patriots way more credit than they. Yeah, no, I know, but Rex he. Ryan. I know, but he's done stupid things in the past where uh, so it blows the game before it starts. If we win this at Denver Sunday night next week, Brock yeah. Osweiler wasn't yeah. terrible. I didn't think it's they fine. really asked him to do anything. Right, it's fine. He's playing Chicago. Chicago is missing like their 17 best skill guys. Listen, this is how we have to get used to three backup quarterbacks won yesterday. We have to be like, yeah, he wasn't bad. He was good. <laughs> so at Denver, home for Philly, at Houston. Yeah. This is yeah. like week 14, but 
at Houston now, not a gimme because all of a sudden their defense is playing really well and JJ Watts out of his mind again. Allowed like 10 points a game for the last three games. Yeah. So, you know, they're in okay shape. Home for Tennessee at Jets at Miami. Well, those are the last two. I think that's where you run into trouble if you get by tonight. You can, your can be games. favored in every one of those games. Sure. For sure. And then Carolina has. Hold on. Carolina is they, at Dallas Thursday. We're going to talk about we'll that. We'll get to it. At New Orleans, mm -hmm. not an easy game. New Orleans is at least going to score points with them. Mm -hmm. Home for Atlanta, they stink. At the Giants, that's a tough one. Week 15, Giants need it. Giants will definitely need it. At Atlanta, home for Tampa. I think Carolina's got a, a much tougher chance of going undefeated. They do the have a tougher though. chance, but they, they, they're they not getting respected by anybody. I mean, you know, they score 30 a game. And yesterday they had 44. It's but something else. They, they win most of their games by double digits. I don't know why... I don't know why we're because they're not they don't have any sexy players aside from Cam you know you have Ted Ginn Jr. and Funchess and we talked to well yeah. here we go we talked about yeah, it yeah but here's the thing and this yeah. is why they're not getting respect this mm -hmm. is a fantasy football thing yeah because we've all had Ted Ginn Jr. and mm -hmm. we've all had Jericho Cotchery and we've all had Jonathan Stewart yeah and we look at that offense and you go well I've had those guys those guys suck right but actually they don't suck this year yeah, they're putting up points. And Greg Olson doesn't suck either. He's never no Greg really Olson sucked. is, always, but he's was never like a Gronk, Jimmy Graham type yeah. tight end who now is like basically the second best tight end, other than the Cincy guy, Eifert, 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 Eifert. Yeah, yeah, I traded for him after he week one. Three passes and they're all touchdowns. And he always gets just crunched. Mm -hmm. Dalton always puts him in a position to just get annihilated by right. somebody. Um, that Cincy Arizona game quickly last night. Palmer sucked in the first quarter. Then they come back. Then it looks like they're going to win by 20. Mm -hmm. And then they remembered, oh, wait, a lot of people probably bet on us. Minus <laughs> four and a half. Right. Let's, let's get really <clears throat> stupid here and settle for a field goal and then just let them drive down and get an easy touchdown. And It's weird how our heads work. They're up seven. They're driving. You're like, oh, man, they're going to go up 10 and then give up a touchdown because yeah. why play defense when you're up 10? You know, but... Yeah, they seem like a team that should score 45 points a game with that offense. They're so loaded. Took their foot off the gas. Like Andre Ellington can't even play for them. No, he can't play. Is Lou Rawls the best? I call him Lou. <laughs> Is Lou Rawls the best running back in the league now? That killed me. I, I played against him yesterday in fantasy. He had like 37 it's points. Awful. Thomas Rawls. Come on. Is Thomas Rawls one of the five best running backs? I, I don't know. Like what when that you watch yesterday. the games, it's like, who's this guy? This guy's amazing. Yeah, everything's like a seven yard carrier. Yeah. It? Like, if you told somebody who just got out of a coma nine months ago, mm -hmm. they were like, who's that Thomas Ross? Like, oh, that was the number one pick in the draft. Right. He's, he went to LSU. Yeah, yeah. yeah he's amazing. Mm -hmm. They this would is, believe that. This is why the Cowboys keep t getting their backups. Uh, the Kristen Michael didn't work out, but we have right. Turbin now, and uh, we're hoping you should have had Lou, Rawls. Lou Thomas Rawls will be on the team. 2018. Well, you, the, you might have got lightning in a bottle with McFadden. McFadden, yeah. Yeah. I just, he always seems like he's going to be hurt after the play, which gets me nervous. But um, it'll happen. But he probably ran out, he ran out the clock yesterday. That was big. Well, let's but, talk. This is one of our favorite podcasts to do because we have the three Thursday games. Three Thursday games, and your team is always involved, mm -hmm. and really single handedly determines what your mood's going to be like on Thursday night. Sure, o along with the fifteen pounds of food you eat. Yeah, yeah. At least by Monday, I'm kind of over it after they lost. But two, there are two very strange lines in the first games. First one is Philly at Detroit. What did you think here? I had no feel for this. I, Philly is the most confounding team of the year. Ugh. I was fortunate enough to have picked against them yesterday. Smart. Just because it, they, Philly's reached a point where they just shouldn't be favored by more than three points over any team yeah, in the league. Five, five and a but half. But they also shouldn't be getting more than like six points against any team in the league. And you just know. Don't, Sanchez, sadly, I think it's over. Even I have to admit it. He beat us in a playoff game. I've been afraid of him for five years since. But he's just not good at football. Yeah. I was surprised their defense was as bad as it is. But, um, so know. what happened? So they signed Kaepernick over the, over the spring. Is that what it's going to be? I saw they try to like rejuvenate him for, and, and then if they don't, Chip Kelly just goes back to college, He's or does he go back out. to college now? Um, I think he could do both. Okay. You know, a <laughs> lot like of that. these games are played on Saturday, and then the pros are on Sunday. So, wow, well, that's a great idea. Yeah, do both. Is there a school? Could he coach like Temple? He doesn't sleep, Bill. He, he's he's constantly looking and scheming between two. Yeah, he coaches Temple and, and the Eagles. 
What other schools are in the Philly area? Villanova. I mean, Maybe do like a, a yeah, like a Div three school. Yeah. Hmm. I think I like you can do it. If anything I had the, can't do it, a chip. <laughs> I had the Eagles by two and a half over the Lions, and no. I can't explain it. What? Why? I had the. You win because it's Eagles by one. I had Lions by two. Why are the Eagles favored there? Four and six at three and I'd seven. I'd say the Lions are really bad. And, and it turns out the Raiders are really bad too because you watch Lions-Raiders and the Lions are terrible and they're winning. The Lions are the only team to score 18 points in consecutive weeks and, and win both those games. And I think they're uh, hanging a banner at halftime on Thanksgiving for that. It's, it's a, a big really, I mean, these are numbers we've just never seen <laughs> before in Barry football. Sanders is 18 out. points. Silly, silly. All right, Carolina at Dallas. Here we go. Yeah, it's the most I had uh, line. I had the Panthers by two and a half. All right, I had the Panthers by four, and it opened at Dallas minus one and is now a pick. So you get that one as well. So and, all right, let's talk about this. Let's so talk three days so three days rest for Carolina. Mm -hmm. Not good. Road game after three days rest. Must win for Dallas. Season's over if they lose. Carolina could probably afford to get rid of it. If they have some banged up guys, maybe just sit them this week. That's all I can think of. I, it should be at least Carolina by two and a half. This is not... I think basically you're saying... what? What if, Okay, what, what if Whedon was the quarterback here? Was Carolina be favored by eight or nine? Like Romo's worth like eight or nine points i think he is spread. though i think I he's worth so. eight or nine points why I isn't so. he I, I just uh, everyone says it's on the road after three days isn't dallas also on the road they're they're traveling from a place they're playing in a place they weren't playing last week so you basically have three days to get to this other place and then play and, and that i love sense, that they neutral site they make such a big deal about caring about player safety and all this stuff and then they mm -hmm. have these guys play two games in five days yeah it's, right. it's completely idiotic yeah Definitely. Like, why not have the bye weeks before Thanksgiving? Mm -hmm. Yeah, they could do that. This, that would have been the last They're bye They're so week. stupid. Yeah, but yeah, uh, anyway. this is a 10-0 and team that won by 17 touchdowns yesterday. It's not a it's not a fluky Carolina team. They should be favored here. That's dumb. I don't well, appreciate I, it, Vegas. I don't, I, I think you've made a, a great reverse jinx case against I, the Panthers. <laughs> I really appreciate it. I think... All right, Chicago... I, one ahead. last thing. Cam has really been really, really fun to watch Dynamite. this year. Yeah. Really great. You watch those highlights. I, I was watching primetime last night. I couldn't sleep. And uh, just over and over again, he's just making the right play. The ball's in the perfect spot for the guy to keep running with it when yeah. he catches it. He's been out of his mind. He does that ball, or that thing where he slings the ball. He slings it. Doesn't even look like he's stepping into it. And, yeah. and the guy you know, always catches it on the right, uh, right, right before the... Uh, out of bounds there it's, it's i don't know it's spectacular i think the knock on him was that he gets a late start every time he had four touchdowns like midway through the second quarter i think yesterday he's good and the other thing with the mvp is you have to ask all right if you put different quarterbacks in this guy's spot right. the whole season how would it have turned out and i just don't think there's a lot of quarterbacks that that could have dragged this team to seven and three or eight and two much less ten and oh no it's true it's definitely him versus brady i i think it's yeah, that's it's probably a little too. too early to to say who's ahead. I, I, they just it's those two, and then it's everybody else. And now it's going to play out. Let's see if Vegas has a any say in this. The thing with Brady though is now you're moving Edelman and Gronk. He's had 20 different offensive line combinations. Yeah, but the schedule's been really easy. It's Brady though. If you go that win above replacement thing, I think it's Brady. Yeah, I don't. I don't think any other quarterback would go mm -hmm. 10 and 0 with the team he's had. Right, Newton. Could Rodgers have done this in Carolina? I don't know. <clears throat> Maybe. Could he Maybe. have done it in New England? He Maybe. makes everyone better. Yeah, All right, anyway. Chicago, speaking of Rodgers, at Green Bay, this is the night game. I like the I like the Thursday night game on Thanksgiving. Night. Good night game. I went high on this because I watched that Broncos-Bears game pretty closely yesterday, and the Bears have just no skill guys at all. Mm -hmm. And Forte might be back for this, the same. But they're down... 10 in the fourth quarter, like it's over. Cutler's been really good this year. Let me say I, that, I enjoyed though. Cutler. Don't you get a good sense of him with the two-minute drill like at the end? I, I I figured for sure he was going to score or make it close. I was like, he, I have a good feeling about him driving this team 70 yards. I don't they, know why. They dominated that game. Yeah. I think they were in the red zone like f at least five times. So you and I they just bet, couldn't score in the red zone. We bet the uh, Bears, and that line flew all over the place all week. I mean, it wasn't like Manning was ever going to play right yeah. after we did last week's podcast, but Denver was favored by one. Then, then uh, 
Chicago was favored by one and a half. And then and then who didn't play? Jeffrey didn't play and Forte Jeffrey. didn't play. And it went to two and we got it at two. And it ended up at two and a half. But uh, we, we, we knew they were going to score and not get the two point conversion, right? You just were you knew. hoping that they would get the two point? I was happy the with the push. Yeah, I, I was. I was. The way that game played out, I was like happy to grab the push and get out of there. Yeah. Because it just seemed like they were snake bit. Right. They should have had 25 to 27 points in that game, and they ended up with 16 up somehow. Out there. Yeah. What do you have for this line? I went high. I went Packers nine and a half. Yeah, that's what I said, and it's nine. So we tie there. All right, before we get to the Sunday games, yep. Um, Sal, mm. I know you have trouble finding shirts that look good untucked. What? Yeah, that's been one of the biggest problems of men's fashion for years. Not anymore. Untuckit.com solved that problem by making shirts that are specifically designed to be worn untucked. Long enough to comfortably cover the belt buckle, but short enough to keep a portion of the pant pocket exposed. Impeccable craftsmanship and attention to detail make Untucket shirts the only choice for the untucked man. I'm an untucked man. So visit Untuckit.com and learn why GQ called them, quote, perfection, unquote. Wow. You can even use the promo code BS15 for 15% off all your purchases. Untuckit.com. Pretty good. I never tuck in my shirt. That's one of the reasons I love living in LA. You wear these. I, I, I don't I don't like this about you. You actually, the, the products you endorse on here, you actually you wear them around the house. I'm not, you wear the untucked. You, you do the, you probably, I think you have the stamp thing. <laughs> if you send me something, I'm wearing right, it. I'm wearing no, the me the undies undies jogging all, pants right, right now. The me yeah. like, I don't like that. So <laughs> Sunday, normally Sunday Thanksgiving, yeah. Is usually a terrible Sunday football day and really an excuse to spend time with your family. Although right. both of us don't don't ever take that excuse. But no. there are a couple good games on Sunday. There are, but the NFL screwed us again. I mean, here you have three, and there are no buys, I get it, but there are three Thursday games. You could not maybe have nine early Sunday games. Can you spread that out a little bit? Is that bit? true? Yes. Nine, so what is there, one late game? There's two late, late afternoon games. Oh, Jesus. Stupid. All right, All right New Orleans at Houston. I don't know what to make of this Houston team. I, J.J. Watt can't be this good. No, I He know. can't be the only reason that this team, that that defense is that good. I I have Texans by one. I don't feel good about Clowney's it. Clowney's been playing well, too. Minus one. I said minus three. I hit this one exactly. Houston minus three over New Orleans. Could this be the game where Drew Brees throws like five picks and there's stuff leaked that Sean Payton is going to oh, the Raiders? Oh, like, Oh, interesting. So, like, this is the, when the Saints officially fall apart and Jay Glazer's on right before the game starts saying, guys, I'm hearing that Sean Payton is looking at the Eagles if Chip Kelly leaves. And I can one of those it. reports. This is when they start scrutinizing yeah. you after your bye, yeah. four and six, can't make them. Sean move. Payton won't be the coach next year. And I don't, I don't know if Drew Brees is their quarterback next year. It's so strange. Where are these guys going? Imagine Brees and Kaepernick not, not starting next year. He'll have to start. But this let me ask you this. Is it possible an AFC South team gets a wild card? How is that possible? You're saying like you if it's a nine and seven. Well, who are you say? Like, yeah, Houston's Houston's five and five. Colts are five and five. They they're you know, they play each other, they play bad teams the rest of the way. It could happen. You're gonna look at you know, I mean don't knock yourself. Are you out penciling Pit you're penciling Pittsburgh in, right? Well you're penciling the Chiefs in, right? I mean they're I'm five not penciling and five anyone also. in. Every, everyone likes the Chiefs and they have an easier schedule, but I just this with is the insane Chiefs with the South where it was so bad and, and now they're gonna have like probably two eight and seven teams going into week seventeen. I think the Chiefs can get to ten wins. Yeah. At San Diego, home for Buffalo, at Oakland, mm -hmm. home for San Diego, at Baltimore, Cleveland, Oakland. Yeah. No, the Chiefs? Yeah. They don't have San Diego twice. No, yo, you're reading yesterday's game. Oh, yeah, yeah. I'm reading yesterday's game. Yeah, they have Oakland game. twice. Bad. They have San Diego. Yeah, and Buffalo they have at Oakland, San Diego at Baltimore, Cleveland, yeah. Oakland. Right. There's not a tough game in that whole stretch. I know, but they play the Bills this week, and what if they're five and six? Like, yeah. Then they're on the outside looking in. I, I, I agree. I, I they're, Look, ESPN stats. I know you love ESPN stats. 73% chance of making the playoffs, the Chiefs. But... Watch, watch this Texans team be around. Here's the other thing. KC and Pittsburgh, I like both of those teams more than whoever is getting the three and the four seed. Yeah. Brock Osweiler in a playoff game, we have a chance to bet on this? Right. I'm excited. If Very great hair and great, and great general look on that guy. 
Brock? Yeah, one of the more handsome quarterbacks we've had in a while. I always think like the handsome quarterback, I always feel like has an advantage because that's a guy who right. from high school on mm -hmm. has just been the handsome big man on campus who's just getting any girl he wants. He's got a little swagger to him. Yeah. You know? Uh, Andrew you don't Locke. like that theory? Andrew Luck. Not, maybe not. You know, there's no fly uh. balling. I don't know. Andrew Luck, Andrew looks <laughs> is he? He's a good looking guy. I don't know. <laughs> How long are we gonna talk about this? No, but you're right. Like if the Chiefs went to uh Denver in the first round after having beaten them, that's that's a that's three Broncos point. by minus two and a half. Two and a half three, yeah. right? Yeah. And if the Chiefs are going to Indianapolis for round one the other way. They might be favored. Yeah. Yeah. And same with Pittsburgh. With that said, it's five. Andy Reid. Yeah. And he could blow any of those games you know, in the worst way possible. And you know he will. You know, know. he'll blow one of those. That's he he just will. It's in, his, it's in his blood. What a jerk. All right. Uh, St. Louis at Cincinnati. Should we, should we officially team. pour one out for our Rams Are bet? Are you kidding me? Are you kidding me? I don't even want to see what that is now. We got it at 20 to win. You know what it is? It's DOA. <laughs> but I, listen, I have something that I think we should do to make up for it. What is it? I don't want to chase the money we lost on the Rams bet. All right. I still defend the Rams bet. Sixty to one now. Well, it should be. We have we have LSU at sixty to one. To win the, yeah, <laughs> we bet on one. Ben Simmons. Yeah, we bet on Ben. Simmons. That's going to be about ten to one after these two and a half. They'll be between a three or five seed in the yeah. tournament. Sixty to one be good. I have a question. Go ahead. What are the Giants to win the NFC? No, I'm not doing that with you. Nine to one to win the NFC. Nine to one. If you had to bet your life on a team winning the NFC, who would you bet on? Three teams better than them. Arizona, for sure. Giants can score, man. I, I, I you're saying, I, I you're like, saying, I just can't, I'm not even in this conversation. I you're can't saying Giants at Arizona, NFC title game. Yeah. Arizona is six point favorites, and you would Giants. just lay the six with yeah. Arizona. I You'd be like, I, oh, I'm not afraid of the Giants at all. No, a little bit, but I don't think that's a good matchup for them. I like Giants, Packers. I think that's better. I love this Arizona team. I'm, I'm irrational about how much I love them. All right. They're going to make it a good Super Bowl against New England. St. Louis at Cincinnati. Bring it on. <laughs> St. Louis is uh, is going to be getting eight and a half points since Cincinnati. That's what I said, and it's nine. It started seven and a half. Even after since he lost, it went up a point and a half. So it's you know, what? one of the things that happened with the Rams is they lost. They haven't uh, had Robert Quinn for the last couple of weeks, right? And they lost Ogletree. I thought he did play two weeks ago or well, last week. No, he he's missed at least the last two. I think he might have even missed the last three. Oh, all right, but uh, I don't know if it's the same defense anymore. I think the defense they had those first four well, weeks. Whatever they held the Ra Ravens to three through most of the game. You know what it is? The Rams' destiny. I think I wrote this last year. They're the best ball team. Like best in ball. best ball, you play golf. golf. Yeah, yeah you, you have four good holes out of eighteen. Mm -hmm. But if you're the guy who on a, you're playing with somebody who's better, right? And all you really need to do is have like four birdies, and you get to carry those four holes, and then the other guy you're with carries the rest. Right. You're going to win a best ball tournament. The Rams are a best ball team. They they play four great weeks a year. Yeah, where they go and they go into Arizona and they beat Arizona. It's like, oh, we're the Rams, and then they freaking that's it. Yeah. Blow the game next week to whoever. They need to score more. That's for sure. I mean, it's Todd Gurley. I mean, who's offensive rookie of the year now? Is it is Winston number one now? I feel bad for Todd Gurley though. I mean, he's yeah. Case well, Keenum's his name? quarterback. Oh, yeah, yeah. I don't know. That's a tough race. Tough race right now. All right, Minnesota at Atlanta. I'm not giving up on Minnesota yet. I just think they had a bad game and had some dumb stuff happen. I think the Packers were fired up. I, I think agree. Atlanta is atrocious. All right. Uh, Minnesota minus one and a half over Atlanta. Right. That's what I said. I said my I said Minnesota minus two. Atlanta's favored by two. So you're getting that. You were you were less atrocious. Hold on, Sal. Guys. I have a I have a new episode of Are We Sure They're Good? Well, we're sure they're average. No. Matt Ryan. Yeah. Are we sure he's good? Are we sure Matt Ryan's good? I think Matt We're Ryan's positive? Good. I think he's good. You, you know really? I mean? Would you look, Would you want him as your QB for the next 10 years? Well, well, how about in this game? Who would you want as your quarterback? You want Bridgewater? I, I don't... I'm not sure Matt Ryan's... Tate, is Matt Ryan good? Matt, Tate shook his head. <laughs> Tate says no? All right, that's it. We don't I don't think Matt Ryan's that good. <laughs> he throws interceptions on it and is from his own end zone. You're not good. That was bad. That was terrible. Dequ that changed the game. And he has Julio Jones. And he's Julio Jones, as Tate points out. And now Freeman, who knows, is concussed. He left early. Yeah, it, it, it's bad for them. Who's betting on them at this point that they're favored? They, they, 
I think this swings during the week. How, how many games in a row has Atlanta not covered? All of um, them. One, two, three. Were they five four, and zero or six and zero? Five, six. They haven't covered since week four. Yeah. When they killed Houston. How do you explain week four? Atlanta forty eight, Houston twenty one. Right. And Houston now gives up 10 points a game. That was outrageous. Yeah, the Texans defense just woke up like two weeks ago. But that line, that Atlanta Colts line, like I wasn't taking Atlanta anyway, but it went from six, went down to three and a half yesterday. Like what happened? Why did that, all that happened during the week is uh, Hasselbeck got older. Like I don't understand why that, that line goes to three and a half and they still don't cover. I don't understand it either. All right. Giants at Washington. Good game. Would you rather have Cousins or Matt Ryan? I think Matt Ryan. Tate, would you rather have Cousins or Matt Ryan? Uh, Matt Ryan. Yeah, there I think I would too. Thank you. Tate. All right, so Kirk Cousins is the is the line for Matt Ryan. He mm -hmm. hurdled that. It's probably right or about right. Yeah. Uh, I have the Giants by three and a half. I like the Giants. Although um, I will say this is the type of game when the Giants fans are feeling good, they're feeling confident. Eli on the road, and then Eli just has a stink bomb, and they're panicking in the fourth quarter because they're down 10. Yeah. We see that. That happens, what, twice, three times a year? Right, for sure. Oh, we're good now. We got it. We're going. Oh, yeah. wait. Eli, what? what's Eli doing? Two weeks to prepare for this, Coughlin, and you saw some really uh, encouraging tape yesterday on the Redskins, and Vegas made it Giants by two. So I, guess I said three. You said three Vegas is sniffing it out. Man, that's too easy to take the Giants there, right? Yeah, they're they're baiting us. Mm -hmm. Maybe they know Eli's going to suck in this game. Yeah, they could. Eli, die. if you're listening, don't suck in this game. I'm going to bet on you. No, no, suck. suck. No, no, need don't. Everybody don't to be suck five on you. Six. I'm going to do a nine to one NFC bet, and I'm betting on you in this that's game. That's crazy. I'm don't do talk the thing where you suck in this game, Eli. I'm not letting you do that. That's you wait till Super Bowl Fifty to suck. Four teams bet on the Giants easily. You, you're not rational about the Giants. So, okay, it's Giants Seattle. It would be like if I was asking you, do you think Colbert's ratings are going to go up? You're like, no, he's never, no, no I way. Actually do. I actually do. All right, Tampa Bay at Indy. Tampa Bay at Indy. It's a good game all of a sudden, I guess. Um, Hasselbeck? Yeah, they're going to keep it going with them. Colts by two and a half. I said uh, four, and it's three. So you, uh, you get it. You get that one. Bucks looking frisky lately. Uh, although they did just have a guy fail a PED test and then claim it was an energy drink. Oh, right. Yeah, yeah. Quan Chancellor. I believe him. He said, he <laughs> said he's appealing it, Yeah. but he didn't realize that this energy drink he was taking mm -hmm. caused the positive test. Right. We don't know if the test was for testosterone or stimulants. I'm guessing testosterone because... Yeah. What kind of stimulants would be in an energy drink? I don't know, but that whole team was on it yesterday. They, yeah. they were on fire. You know what you have to do to fail a PD test for testosterone, right? What do you do? You, your testosterone has to be four times the, the normal level. Oh, is that right? In your body to fail a test. There's no energy drink that puts you over that, right? So then if it wasn't testosterone, then it was stimulants, mm -hmm. which means he was drinking an energy drink that basically had like amphetamines in it or something, would yeah. be my guess. They have those. Those are good. My point is... So he comes out today. It was like it was the energy drinks fault. Well, tell us what the energy drink is because I want to make sure I don't drink it or oh, yeah. my kids don't drink it. Can we find out what it is? Right. You Can I get this in a Seven Eleven? Like, where? What is this drink? The FDA needs to know about this. So yeah. Our children are in jeopardy. Yeah. Where's Where's Adam Schefter and Mike Florio with the name of the energy drink? Yeah. I got it. Yeah. Well, uh, that's a tough one, but I think Tampa. And now they're five and five. What's the wild card in the NFC? Seven and three Vikings, and six and four Atlanta. Is that is that the wild card? Am I missing somebody? Yeah. Tampa's a game Seattle's behind. getting a wild card. Seattle, Minnesota's. But they're getting five. The I'm just saying they're the same not, record. As I'm not getting excited so. about anyone else yet. Buffalo, but, oh, go ahead. Tampa Bay. So they're they're at Indy, mm -hmm. home for Atlanta, home for New Orleans. In one of those three games, Jameis Winston's going to be absolutely atrocious. Yeah. Because it's just, he's on a nice run right now, but his history in college suggests that he's going to have games or quarters where he just throws the ball up for grabs a couple times. It hasn't happened lately. I'm just 
I'm red flagging it. I'm with you. I mean, I, I at said some he, point he's going to burn burn a group of gamblers here. He I don't know when. He'll be rookie of the year, but just last week he dove and fumbled the ball at the goal line yeah. against the Cowboys. If there wasn't a dumb penalty, they they'd be asking for his head. You might be right. Uh, Buffalo at Kansas City. Good game. Good game or Buffalo might lose by 40 points tonight and then suddenly not that good of a game. Yeah. I have Chiefs by five and a half. Oh, you went high, huh? Yeah. I said four, and it is four. Okay. I guess we'll learn more tonight. I guess we will. We're going to learn something, all right. They've won four in a row. We're learning that Tom Brady is the man. Listen to you. You're confident. I am confident. Belichick's not losing to Rex Ryan. Let me ask you this because you have the Patriots money line. Yeah. It might, it might. Put the Bills on a three-team teaser plus 17. No. No? No. No good? Here's the problem with doing with anything Green like Bay that. Green Bay Thursday night and Cincinnati over St. Louis? It's so not fun to have money against your team because it's in the back of your head the whole time. I know. I'm going to ride the Pats bet. Can I read you something? We got a, a tweet. This is by this guy, Nikki T, at Nikki T, T27. Bill Simmons, Cousin Sal, I went 0-3 in a three-team teaser. Washington, Philly, Minnesota. Is there a name for that? The Corolla? <laughs> I was going to say the Sal, but maybe like the, the, the disease tease or something. Who's the know. worst Who's the worst gambler that you know that we're <laughs> friends with? Daniel's getting up there. Oh, let's call it the Kellison. All right, we'll call it the Kellison. He doesn't traditionally do teasers, but... <laughs> Can we, let's take a week to think about that. All right, let's think about it, because I've, I've definitely been in that position. Um, Oakland at Tennessee. Hmm. Poor Raiders fans. They're, they're such high hopes, right? Three weeks ago. It's it, And I almost started Derek Carr mm -hmm. yesterday over Aaron Rodgers. And then the rosters froze before I actually had oh, the decision really? to make to see what it looked like. And Good there was you. like an 18-point difference. Yeah. The lesson is don't bench Aaron Rodgers. Just don't. No, you Just can't. don't ever do it. I have uh, the Titans laying one and a half points to the Raiders. Wow. Yeah. I had the Raiders by two and a half, and it's Raiders by two. Can we do cross off teams quickly? Because this reminded me that we have to do cross off teams. We can't put the Raiders in there yet. Oh, uh, Cleveland Tennessee. Cleveland and Tennessee, two and eight, crossing yes. them off. Good. Baltimore, San Francisco, Detroit, three and seven, crossing all of them off. Right. At four and six, Oakland, Miami, Rams, New Orleans, Tampa, Chicago. I'm crossing off Oakland, my, Oakland Miami, Rams, New Orleans. I think but those are all cross -offs. When Chicago goes four and seven after Thanksgiving, they're they're in there too. Yeah, I guess we could cross them off unless they somehow win on Thursday. You, so you're crossing Oakland off, huh? They'll they'll probably I'm crossing they, Oakland they off. Could they be suck. five and six. I they know, suck. but they could be five and six. They I'm so mad that oh, I so got talked into we, them. How we give up on teams. Like Minnesota's great. Oakland's great. <laughs> well, I know. I'm not saying it's what we have to do. But here that if you go back and you actually look at Oakland's wins, it makes a lot more sense. Right. They beat the Ravens by four. Mm -hmm. They beat the Browns by seven. Mm -hmm. They beat the Chargers by eight. And they beat the Jets during the week when Fitzpatrick got hurt and Geno Smith came in, whatever happened right. in that game. Those are their four wins. Yeah. I thought they hung with some teams that they lost. They hung with the Steelers. Steelers. a little bit. Hung with the know? Broncos a tiny bit. Yeah. Hung with the Bears, but lost that. But I mean... It's not like they have a good win. You didn't what and AFC South team? You didn't cross off AFC South teams, right? No, the whole AFC only, South only is Tennessee. in play. No, right. I crossed up Tennessee because right. two and eight, I think, yeah, is no, insurmountable. They're done. They're done. And they it, blew that Thursday game. I thought that was a weird, weird line, Jacksonville minus three, and Tennessee to to blow the cover. I mean, just the fact that it wasn't a push. They were up late in the fourth, and uh just bad teams find the way. This Indianapolis team, they they snuck out that Broncos win and then Really shouldn't have beat the Falcons. Mm -hmm. they were, I think they were down 14 to nothing in that game. Hasselbeck was, looked like a 40-year-old wow, guy. You told me. I forgot that they did that. Yeah, I guess they did beat the Falcons. They also snuck out <laughs> the Jags in week three. Mm -hmm. Remember that one? Yeah. Overtime? Right. And then week two, they, they snuck out that Titans game. Mm -hmm. They have five wins. And those five wins are by two points, three points, seven points, three points, and three points. Yeah. They're in a real... I'm not sold, is my point. <laughs> well, let's just hope that... I mean, so who do we want to bet against? In the, uh, I guess it doesn't matter. As a four seed. Guaranteed say, four seed, the AFC South winner, right? Oh, Blake Bortles. You want to bet Blake against Bortles Blake Bortles? the dream scenario? Yeah. 
that's going to be a disaster. The Jags in the in the in right <laughs> with a four seed. So Jags, let's say against the Steelers. Houston at least has a, a decent defense at JJ Watt, and yeah. Indianapolis will have a healthy luck All at right. that point. I guess it's Jags. It's got to be the Jags. Uh, those receivers scare me a little bit. Hearns and Robinson when they're healthy. I, I don't know, but they they not look good Thursday. I'll tell you one thing: the Jags have played better than those than the Colts the last five six yeah. weeks. Well, they're going to be five and six because they're home against San Diego. And I want you to just kick me as hard as you can in the nuts if I bet San Diego for the next four years at any point. <laughs> I have uh, with that team. I have the Jags by four and a half over the Chargers. Gonna, I probably went too low. You, no, you went high. I, I had three and it's four. So you, you get it. You're closer there. Seven, three, six. Poor five, Phil Rivers. You're up by one. Him and Gates had words. They did, right? You know what? It's whenever people have words, they always do the thing like we're brothers. Brothers argue, which I totally get. Yeah. But I'm always waiting for the one time for, for them. Like, what happened there? Look, Antonio's a dick. Everyone <laughs> on this team knows it. He's been a dick right, for ten years, right. and sometimes he makes me mad. <laughs> but we're brothers. <laughs> Can you imagine, like, if if your show feud reporters after every show, like when Jimmy's yeah. snapping at somebody or something, <laughs> they have to talk about it after. I like it. Listen, I love Jason Shift. He's been here for 12 years. Sometimes <laughs> brothers argue. Uh, these damn Chargers. Should we Should we give a hearty shout out to uh, new mom, Jill Lederman? Oh, yeah, yeah. Jill Lederman, executive producer of uh, of uh, Jimmy Kimmel Live. I want to bet. I, I bet 500 to one odds she'd name, the, name her son Rocket. Rocket. Yeah. I like it. Rocket, I, I thought it was for sure going to be something over the top Jewish, but it was not. Rocket's not. Rocket Lee. It's just over the top. Rocket Lee. After the Civil War general, Rocket E. Lee. I like it. Yeah. It's a good one. It's good. It's good. Yeah. It's good for my character of the year rundown. That's it's, what it is. The character of the year is going to be incredible this year. It. I might just say Jill Lederman, Rocket, dot, dot, dot. No. Is the character of the year, is there any way anyone overtakes Corolla at this point? It's pretty much He's impossible, right? He's doing great. Corolla tried to re tell me a story. He was drunk yesterday about how Mike <laughs> August gets character points. You don't need to say he was oh, drunk okay. yesterday yeah, anymore know. with Corolla. Oh, yeah. I'm sorry. I yeah. apologize. <laughs> it's it's uh, patronizing. But I, I may have to give him Cody points for how he told the story. It took him 40 minutes to tell a story about how August should get Cody points. It's weird. It's very strange. Listen, Corolla taking forty minutes to tell a story is not <laughs> is not breaking news. Let's go see Creed uh, Friday, all of us after uh, Thanksgiving. I would love that. I've already seen it, but oh, I want to go see it again. Yeah. Oh, you jerk! Where'd you see? Well, it? I have Michael B. Jordan on my podcast, so I had to. I had, what they sent me a screener. Oh, you son of a bitch! And, uh, an iPad screener. I watched it on my iPad. Oh, it's good. It's good. It's good. It's good, and. I don't want to get carried away with Sly Stallone's performance because you know how I feel mm -hmm. about the man, but I do think he can get nominated. I heard that from it's someone really affecting. less crazy than you even. Yeah. Yeah. It's really affecting. Really? You leave it thinking like, man, it's, I'm just glad Sly Stallone's been in my life for 40 years. Oh, that was I'm my excited. takeaway from the movie. And good. Michael B. Jordan's really good. The mm -hmm. girl's good. It's a good movie. I'm looking past Thanksgiving now. I'm excited for that. We should go again. All right. Miami at the Jets. We have a lot of four and sixes versus five and fives. It's, Why, it's they, interesting. I, I read an abnormal amount of, of football articles the last 24 hours for research because I wasn't happy with my performance last week. Uh -huh. The Dolphins seemed confident after that game, even though they lost yesterday, that after they did the some good things and they're still feeling, they're still in the playoff hunt. It's like, you guys are terrible. They fell apart. They if you, nothing if you rush your quarter. quarterback, he just throws it up for grabs. What, how does Miami feel good about anything? And they have no home field advantage. They have no, what we call in the business identity bill. Are you going to run the ball with <laughs> Lamar Miller or are you going to pass? What, what is your thing here? <laughs> Landry, your receiver. If, what, they, they, I don't, I don't know what, what their deal? I is. would, uh, I would give Lamar Miller the ball every time and do everything possible not to have Tannehill have yeah. to do anything with anybody running at him. Try something. Yeah. yeah. Well, the Cowboys I, left them a minute in the second quarter, and he, he came down and scored. I said, "Oh, that's it. Now, now we're gonna fall apart." But uh, he doesn't capitalize on momentum so much. Tannehill. It's like you could get your first quarter Tannehill. Yeah. It could be the same as your third quarter, even though they're driving. Yeah, and stuff. you rooted against him yesterday. Once you hit that guy like three times, yeah. he folds. That was it. Yeah. So that's one of the reasons I like the Jets this week because I, I think they can just blitz him and send dudes at him and get in his head. I have Jets by four and a half. All right, you went too high. I said four, and it's three and a half. That's and too low. And the Jets defense might be the one thing that we're all wrong about. 
I mean, Rivas got beat a lot yesterday. They're just they're not lights out like they used to be. I I know from from uh, Little Birdies that mm-hmm. the Patriots felt like they sold high in Rivas. They did. Yeah. yeah, he he secretly got torched in that Baltimore playoff game. Mm-hmm. Um, and they really like Butler. I don't I don't think they were too. I guess that's all we need to know. The Patriots always make the right decisions. Terrible. Yeah, just find me the guy who's come back to haunt them. Right. Doesn't doesn't really exist. They usually when when he cuts the cord, they usually uh, they yeah. they usually don't look back. You didn't think Jonas Gray was going to be a, a standout for the Dolphins, but the how one, did not picked him up yet? The one move move he made that I, I, where he got too smart for himself, I think, was Seymour when they traded Seymour for the first round pick. But that turned out to be like the seventh pick how in the old draft. Was he? Yeah, I'm trying. But to he, when they traded him, it was he he had two really good All Pro years mm-hmm. left in him when they traded him. Right. That was probably the one they didn't sell, but it, they got a great pick. So their one move is not signing Pollard was the, the worst thing they did, I think. Yeah, but he would have hurt somebody in practice. That's true. You're right. Arizona, one of the two late afternoon games. Thank you, NFL. Arizona at San Francisco. If, if this even counts as a game, uh, cards by eight and a half. Yeah, you're gonna get this. I don't know why I said seven, but it's ten and a half. It opened at nine. Now ten and a half. I have a confession to make. Go ahead. I don't think Blaine Gabbert's that bad. They showed a little fight in them. He's compared to some of the other guys we're watching. Like if you just switched him and Tannehill, I, mm-hmm. I don't think either team's different. Second quarter, they take the ball at the 10 yard line with a minute left and they're running a play. And I'm like, what are they doing? Run this clock out against Seattle. And he almost gets sacked in the end zone and then takes him down the field and they score. Yeah. It's like, wow, they're, they're kind of in this game, but then, you know, I think there's about 15 different quarterbacks that are all right around each other from a talent standpoint, and he's on the higher end of those guys. Right. And now, does Kaepernick get shut down if he's playing well, like his non-throwing shoulder? Well, I think what happened is I think he got the surgery. Maybe I'm wrong, but the way I read it. And then they put it? No, he elected to get the surgery, and I think they weren't happy about it. Oh, I see. Okay. I think he was like, F you guys, I'm getting I'm getting my shoulder fixed so I can be ready for next year. I want to find out what happened because they claim that three teams, four, Niners claim that three teams approached them last week about uh, trading him. I can't imagine what was offered. No, <laughs> they're still on the team. Um, I, he's, I, he's salvageable. You think so? Yeah, I think right coach, right system, moving him around, doing stuff. It, it can't be forgotten that he completely demolished Green Bay in that playoff sure. game. Yeah. If that's... For somebody who's allegedly washed up at age 26, 27, like, I can't get that game out of my head. Right. He's got to get another chance somewhere. There's talk about, like, it's not even, uh, and I said there's talk about, so that's different than, than we talked about. But there's talk <laughs> about that his head's not in the game. Like, he might be a Johnny Manziel in terms of who knows if he wants to play football anymore. Yeah. He's never been the same since we did our podcast. That's right. <laughs> Pittsburgh at Seattle. All right, this is a good game. This is a good late afternoon game. It's a good one. Yeah. I'm a little afraid of Pittsburgh. I always say this, but I'm always afraid of teams that could score with the Pats. Yeah. Round two, if they came in, we'd be laying nine and a half, but I'd be nervous the whole time. They'll have come off a win against Jacksonville or somebody bad. Yeah. Seahawks minus four over the Steelers. Do we split this? No, you get it. It's four and a half. I said three and a half. Did you win the week here? Yeah, I have a, I'm going to parlay the Steelers along with the over 50 and a half of the times Collinsworth calls Roethlisberger Ben. <laughs> is, that, is this a, this is an NBC game, is it? No. We talked to Ben. <laughs> That's not, is that an NBC game? No, CX it's Steelers? a late afternoon. No, it's, it's, uh, there's no NBC game. No, your Patriots Denver is next. That's NBC. Oh, I didn't. Oh, they flexed it. That's why. Right. Yeah. Oh, so they, okay. Yeah. What do you think of that line? You love it. Yeah. Uh, Have you guys I've, ever lost on Sunday night? Yes. The short answer is yes. <laughs> Pat's minus five in Denver. We split this. I said I said six. It's five and a half. Um, Do you think Peyton Manning, should he hang it up or... Who are we to tell him when he should hang it up? 
What if he well, just wants both. to keep playing football? I think it's both. I think he should hang it up. And who the hell are we to tell him he should hang it up? I if think. our podcast is terrible 20 years from now, these Monday pods, we're yeah. like in our 60s talking about gambling lines and yeah. it's just terrible. I'd want to hang on for that extra year. We would. Tate, yeah. you'll tell us when it gets bad, right? Tate, tell us. He's sleeping. Wake up. Tate will be leaking to Adam Schefter. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> Bill's, Bill's podcast performance sucked <laughs> yesterday because he had a strained vocal cord. Right. <laughs> it might need surgery. I don't know. I think, well, Denver's right to start Osweiler. And I don't even know if uh, Peyton's back, but it is getting nitpicky with these injuries. It really is. Like the torn plantar fasciitis, is like, that's all it could be is torn. It's it's little tears. So if you all say these guys torn, are, they all have seven injuries. Course. It's like, come yeah. on. Yeah. All these guys are hurt all the time. Brady, Brady plays with, you, you he just played with think, broken uh, ribs one year. He never said anything. It's sad because no one's getting, he's not getting the Cal Ripken, the Mariano Rivera, I'm going to go on tour and every everywhere I go, they're going to honor me kind of thing. It's like, he can't do that without throwing three picks a game. So it, it's sad in that regard. We noticed, well, first of all, we joked about how he should have just played a half season like Clement style. And they actually probably should have done that. Yeah. They should have played Brock Osweiler for the first eight weeks of the mm-hmm. season and then just brought Manning in for week 10. But we noticed yesterday. But they did win every game of those, you know. That, I know, but you don't want to peak in September and October. Like, yeah. they could have peaked later. But mm-hmm. we noticed yesterday that it does seem like the torch has been passed to J.J. Watt from a commercial standpoint. Oh, interesting. Yeah. And there's that one commercial. What is it? Papa John's, Tate? Yeah. Manning and... uh Manning and J.J. Water in the commercial. Right. It's a little bit of a torch pass. J.J. shines in that But one. I keep waiting for Manning to hit him over the head with a Papa John's box <laughs> so he can keep his title. Let's load the boot. But is J.J. Watt the guy now? Maybe. I don't know if a def- who, defensive who, player could, could do it, though. It's, it's, I, I just think in terms of kids watching and in the fantasy perspective, like J.J. Watt is undraftable and, and that, that's always going to hurt him kind of thing. But yeah. maybe. Yeah, I think so. I like him. I think so. Who great. is it then? Um, Don't tell me Russell Wilson. This little guy wears number nine in Dallas, named Tony Romo. He's well, making, he's thirty six though. He's making crown. Never played in a time. Super Bowl. So why do you have to? Is say it that? Eli? Oh no, no, no. Uh, I don't think there's a guy. Think of Rogers. It. Hold on, hold on. I'm gonna look. Discount right double check. Omaha. I guess it is Rogers. It's Rogers, isn't it? Well, maybe it's your good looking quarterback, Brock Osweiler. He's very handsome. Handsome fella. Handsome man, that Brock Osweiler. Easy on the eyes. I don't know. Maybe Andy (laughs) Reid. Andy (laughs) Reid. I'm I'm Andy Reid for Sonic. Uh, (laughs) All right, last one. Monday night, this is talk about hanging it up. The Monday night franchise might be done. Baltimore at Cleveland. Ugh. The three-headed monster of Schaub, Buck Allen, and Kamir Aiken versus Manziel, Isaiah Crowell, and Travis Benjamin. The NFL really stuck it to ESPN with their schedule <laughs> this season. They really did. Really, you nice. got out because you knew this this game was. Oh, coming. I think I you knew. Think, I, I think it might have been a response to certain things that happened. But <laughs> it was on the schedule. I have Browns minus three over the Ravens. Uh, all right, you got. I thought it was a pick because my head was hurting trying to figure out a line for this, so I just said pick. And it's minus two, Cleveland. So Matt Schaub is starting for the Ravens. Mm-hmm. I, no, there's going to be no fantasy games won and lost from in this game, right? Oh, that's I like where what, you went with what that. Is it? Maybe Justin Tucker you have with someone. As Justin a Tucker. Uh, the Browns tight maybe end. Maybe a Travis Benjamin start for somebody Benjamin, who's got a bunch of injuries. Barnage, yeah. I don't, Barnage, yeah. maybe? It's rough. That's, That's incredible. They should flex this game. You know, you don't have to watch this game, Bill. There's a new show that um, that actually streams on the Waze app. Well, I didn't know about oh, this. You didn't what know is that? it? It's called uh, The Sextican. And it's uh, <laughs> okay. Mario Lopez and Selma Hayek. And, they're, and it's a remote city in Mexico. Like, there's only two cell phones in the whole city. And they're, and they're kids. It's like Saved by the Bell, but they're kids. Yeah. And they just sexed each other back and forth. The Sextican. The Sextican, yeah. It's, it's just nice. on the Waze app? Just on the Waze app. Just the two of them back and forth as youngsters sexing. It's pretty good. Our friend Brad told us about an actual show <laughs> <laughs> called The River or River oh, on yeah, Netflix. Yeah. Right. He oh, was all, he was as gushing about it. Loves it. Yeah. But is against every other show that's on I just any get mad. platform. I get mad because it's... It, it's it's like you're never done with homework. It's like kind of you're getting dumped more and more shows on you. I'm sad about Last Man on Earth just 
kind of fallen off the cliff. What? What is going on? It's just they couldn't. They can't really they keep can't, it going. Couldn't sustain it. They can't. Right. It should have. It actually show. probably should have just been a movie. The more my son laughs at it, I'm like my ten year old. I was like, yeah, this. That's what this is. This is like a beer commercial for thirty minutes. Yeah. No. Uh, hey, we have to do um, one more. Mention one more thing. Go ahead. On Saturday night, HBO will re-air last weekend's fight between Canelo Alvarez and Miguel Cotto. You can watch it. Uh, after that on HBO Go, HBO Now, um, scout Canelo mm. to see if you should bet on him or Triple G when they finally have their super fight because you know it's coming. You don't need cable or satellite to watch HBO anymore. Just download the HBO Now app and start your free one-month trial today. I went to that fight. I was talking to my friend Brian. What do you think it would be? Minus 160 Triple G or higher? Higher. Higher. I met Triple G before the fight. Oh, you did? It's always awkward to meet somebody when English isn't their first language. There's just so much pressure on right, the one-minute right. interaction. You got to carry it. But uh, yeah, you had a meeting and he came by, or you met him. No, I actually just went over to <laughs> went over to seat and talked nice. to him. He was like in the fourth row mm -hmm. watching it, and I guarantee he left that fight going, "I'm going to kill Canelo." Yeah, because Cotto. He was rooting for Canelo more than even we were with the bet. Right? Oh, I don't know if Canelo will fight him though. Really? Yeah, I don't. I don't know if that's happening. But if it does, um, Cotto it was interesting being there and having no idea how it was being scored because mm -hmm. you were tech. We were texting. Yeah, I was texting. I had no idea, but it just seemed like I, I was worried Cotto was going to steal rounds because he was a little more active. I was nervous. And too. Canelo only does like the one punch, two punch. That's it. He never throws flurries or series of punches right. or anything. And, uh, but Cotto's just too old. Like his punches had no steam, but they, mm -hmm. the angles were there. And I think that's what Triple G must have saw he as, he's, as seen as he's watching. Canelo landed flush, though. He landed he flush did. a few times. Cotto's a tough bastard, you know. He landed, it looked like he was 20 pounds heavier in person. Mm -hmm. Like it was one of those things where as soon as they took off their clothes and they were in the, it was like, oh my God. Yeah. He's going to kill this guy. He gains like 18 pounds after yeah. the weigh ins. Yeah. But, um, Cotto, not, six years ago, I think probably beats him. Mm. Pre Margarita. But, but with, with Freddie Roach. Yeah. I think Roach has made a difference. But they, they handpicked, they, they did a nice job hyping this fight. So it was good. It was very entertaining. It, it, mm. it was one of those Canelo controlled the fight, but I never felt like he totally had the fight. And I had it eight rounds to four. Would you have it? Yeah, I think I had it eight four. Uh, but, but you know, there's always those first two, you don't, there's a tie round in there. I was nervous. Yeah, there was always, there's like the throw array rounds. Like round one, it's yeah. like who won that round? I have no yeah, idea. Eleven punches landed to to nine. I thought it was one round, one good flurry exchange away from maybe a rematch. But you know what? Some of those fights are just like close. Yeah. Like like oh man, this is good. Well, uh, Canelo, I guess beat him decisively, so there's not going to be a rematch. But Cotto maybe could have stepped it up one or two rounds, and there would have been one. He ran out of gas around like the eighth, ninth round where mm -hmm. the way he was circling and moving and it was kind of keeping a distance, but his legs just couldn't do it for the whole hour. Right. And once he kind of got sunk, that was it. Canelo could just kind of close in. Canelo, something's missing with him and I don't know totally how to describe it. But it's almost like he's like, like he a gets, robot boxer. Gets up for some of these fights somehow. I don't, it's a yeah, weird maybe thing. that's part of it. Does it, feel, it just feels like he's a robot. Like he's one, two. Yeah. One, two. But it's not, there's no like artistry to it. I think he's still depressed over Mayweather. I really do. I wonder if he'll ever shake that. But what after watching Cotto yesterday, like, yeah, he was young. Yeah. But after watching Cotto yesterday, it made total sense why, I mean, Mayweather's like, yeah, Cotto on acid. Pick you apart. Yeah. But, uh, it was really easy to, to move around and hit him, mm -hmm. which I think I guarantee Triple G was just like rubbing his palms together. Yeah. Like, oh my God. So you think minus 250 or more? I think it would be minus 250. Hmm. But it does seem like Alvarez generates action mm -hmm. because he's popular. It's sure. almost like how the Packers line gets skewed. Yeah. He should have been a two to one favorite in the Cotto fight. He ended up oh. being a three to one oh, favorite. You mean right? Lower. Yeah, right. Yeah. It's, it bumped up by an extra. He does. Yeah. Hundred just because he's popular, very popular with the Mexican community, like the uh, oh, show and the, lady, the, 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 and the ladies, almost as big as the Sextican is on uh, on ways. Is the but Sextican yeah. is? Can you binge watch it, or is it just you have you to can, wait each week? You know what it is. The best part is uh, afterwards. It's called. It's actually even better than the Sextican. It's called uh, talking sexting 
with uh, Chris Hardwick. Yeah, he, he reviews the whole thing. That's also on the Waze app. So. I meant to tell you this. That I'm not making this up. That mm -hmm. An audience channel, whatever the DirecTV channel that is. Right, I know what you're talking about. So there's some boxing show that they have. Or it's like, I'm sorry, an MMA show. Mm -hmm. That uh, it's it's like in year two. or And the ad was on. And it's like MMA meets there's seedy stuff going on. So it's a lot of like somebody screaming that you're going to get me that money by Monday. That's a lot of that oh, stuff. Really? And oh, good. this guy's berating some bald guy and the guy's like kind of overacting and, and pretending he's scared. And I realized it was Jeff Ross. Oh yes, <laughs> yeah. that's right. Yeah. He told us about that. Yeah. yeah. <laughs> Jeff Ross was playing this guy who was just being screamed at. <laughs> and I was like, so then I went on YouTube and I went on this deep dive trying to find the trailer to send to you and Jimmy and I couldn't find it. Oh, but yeah, it was man. Jeff Ross. Oh, I know he loves it. And dude. one of those, I'll get you the money. <laughs> they're, they're trying to break his hand or something. Is so Nick I'm Carter tape in there? It. I think like Nick Carter like roughs him up. I think it's something. Nick Jonas is in oh, the Nick show. Jonas. Yeah, 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 Nick yeah, Jonas yeah. is in one the show. One of the Knicks, yeah. It actually looked like a pretty good show. I, I was kind of upset I that I wasn't watch watching it. it, but I, I was so excited. Anytime Jeff Ross is doing anything, right. I'm excited. I'm not going to watch unless Brad yells at me for not watching. But. <laughs> <laughs> By the way, HBO should do a 24-7 on uh, Mayweather um, Rousey, and it's really just Mayweather just laughing the whole time for four episodes. <laughs> just to think like weeks ago, everyone was like, oh, maybe she could be Floyd Mayweather. I don't know. I don't know. That, well, that was the... <laughs> but the nadir of sports talk arguments i know but there were some like people you would respect who would kind of like i don't know yeah if she got him at the right moment you know she, do you think she broke her jaw in round one that's one of my favorite internet conspiracies that's what they're saying yeah. well and then they got debunked but nobody's seen her and the way her face swelled she and, got beat up bad with the fists let's just say that i, I wouldn't be surprised hmm. uh did you watch do you know about survivor series last night i, I watched the last match and I uh, always think? tough you when you win thing? the title and then it just gets cruelly <laughs> taken away. They did the exact same thing to Daniel Bryan. They just yeah. ran it back. Shane, Roman Reigns wins. Right. He celebrates confetti. Then Sheamus, Sheamus comes out and well, then boom. It, it's kind of like Survivor. It's funny you say Survivor Series, but when when it's 49 minutes past the hour and you're at tribal council, you're like, oh, there's going to be a tie because they're going to have to re-vote. Yeah, yeah, it, like, it was like uh, it was too early. 10 40 Eastern time and Reigns had won the title. And a ridiculous amount of confetti comes down like yeah. blinding like the the 94 rangers and the ticker tape con parade didn't have this much confetti like right. oh something's gonna happen here so what you you want to say what happened like well triple h comes out <laughs> yeah and it looks like they're reenacting the daniel bryan thing right but then reigns actually gets triple h knocks him knocks him down spear. allegedly yeah. out the spear but then sheamus came running in and drop kicked and Reigns, then that didn't even work at first. Didn't totally work. Yeah. But yeah. Sheamus is our new WWE champion. That's it. There's never been a better illustration of how much trouble the WWE is <laughs> in know, short term with talent. They've just got they've gotten ruined. They lost Seth Rollins. They lost Daniel Bryan. CM Punk left. Orton's hurt. Orton's hurt. Cena's out. Now Ces Cesaro's hurt. Oh, he is? I didn't yeah, he got that. hurt. He's out six months. Like, oh, they just man. got demolished by injuries. Oh, that's bad. And I think the top heel right now is uh, Kevin, Kevin Owens. Kevin Owens. Yeah. See, I, I thought what they were going to do yesterday, I thought they were going to have Ambrose turn on Reigns. I like Ambrose. I think he's kind of – has some mid-80s Piper potential as a grit. heel. I agree. I don't know why they won't turn him. That, and it looked like they did the thing where they were almost going to right at the end, but they didn't. But he, he's better as a heel. Do they have too many heels? I don't know. Or are they hurting for a heel? I don't know. They, there's a guy they have on, on Next called Finn Balor, mm -hmm. who I think they should bring up. He's ready? Yeah, they're, they're, they're like two or three stars short right now. Mm -hmm. But not, not by their fault. It just seems... And then Sting got hurt, too. That was the other one. Oh, right. They thought Sting Undertaker was going to be like their Wrestle, right. uh, WrestleMania match. Do you know I played high school football with Dudley, Devon Dudley from the Dudley Brothers? No. The Dudley Boys? I swear That's to God. That's impossible. Devon Hughes. Yeah, he was a year really? younger than me. Yeah. Yeah, they it's look a, a little long in the tooth these monster days. Monster defensive line. What yeah. does that mean? I'm we're old. I'm old. No, the Dudley boys. We it's are. just twenty years of doing their stuff. All right, you. plug some stuff. Jimmy Kim Live tonight is our Star Wars tribute show. Oh Carrie Fisher, God. Harrison Ford, J.J. Abrams, Harrison Ford, Daisy Ridley, Adam Driver, and John Boyego. Right? That's how you wow. say that. It's gonna be fun. So I have a prediction. I think the Star Wars movie is gonna be big. You do? Yeah, <laughs> I do. I think it's gonna do well. well. They should sell some toys or something. Make yeah, some I think, money off. I it. think you don't feel it yet, but I think people. Are
people are going to start talking about it. Fifty million dollars in pre-sale tickets, it's just amazing. tickets, and people buying Christmas toys of characters they don't even know what what they are right now. And we spent our entire childhood making fun of these kids. We did, yeah, and feeling superior to them. I still think we are. And now they've had more kids. Mm -hmm. They've had their own kids. That's true. And they're all going to go see this movie. And now it's somehow cool. Right. I think you're right. I, I was never in on Star Wars. I just never. I just I was slow in, and okay. It was, I was fine. Average. Yeah. But we, you, the kids in the school saw it mm -hmm. like seven, eight times. Yeah. I never understood those kids. I don't know how much fun we can make. We just did 10 minutes on wrestling, but I don't know how much. <laughs> oh, listen, I have I my know. own terrible vices. I, I just never understood Star Wars. <laughs> You yeah, know? I was making fun of the Star Wars kids. And meanwhile, I'm buying like baseball and football right. and hockey cards oh, and playing with all them. all over it. Yeah. yeah. I, we all yeah. have and our own that's Piccadillos. when it was three movies. Then it became six and seven. Now Disney's saying they might do one a year for the next few years. It's going to be a lot. I will say the third Star Wars in the theater when Darth Vader became Luke's father. Mm -hmm. And that whole thing. Don't and ruin it. Quiet. I didn't see that. That one. was a great moment in the theater. It's like, <laughs> yeah. oh my god, whoa! That was big. It was a. It was that was a big one. Yeah, that was a good uh, face turn, as we would say. Yeah. <laughs> uh, I don't know. You hear? It. I was just about to plug my Sports Center. My best bets are seven and three. I have the Bills as my best bet tonight, and there's a dog barking in the background. Take the dog tonight. That's a bad sign, Bill Simmons. I don't know. With the dog barking as you're about to yes, do your bills thing? Yes, I'm picking the dog. I don't know. And follow me at the Cousin Sal on Twitter. And that's I it. would also encourage you to, to go on Sal's Twitter feed <laughs> on Thursday in case this Cowboys game goes horribly wrong. Uh, <laughs> I, I just, I always love the thought of you angrily tweeting during Cowboys games as you're surrounded by 25 family members right. and your wife who just repeatedly looking at you for help when and you're just not helping. I'm her. holding the family hostage with a drumstick. And we make fun of that line. I say it's terrible, but I know the Cowboys be up 10 points in the fourth quarter and something. Sean Lee will drop an interception or something. That'll be it. But You do. You go into this little zone when there's too much going on, when yeah. your brain kind of locks and you just get this. It's a little like what happens to Ryan Tannehill, actually. <laughs> when there's family and you have responsibilities with the wife, and, yeah. but, but the Cowboys are blowing a game and it's like you can literally see you short-circuiting. I've heard that before. Yeah. Have you seen his wife, though? I don't think we should feel too bad for Ryan Who's Tannehill. Wife? Remember? Great wife. Yeah. Listen, but don't think Brock Osweiler's not doing well in Denver <laughs> right now. Happy Thanksgiving to Ryan Tannehill's wife. Let's just say it. Yeah. Uh, <laughs> uh, thanks to SeatGeek, our presenting sponsor that just launched a new platform called SeatGeek Marketplace. Allows you to buy and sell event tickets. Learn more at SeatGeek.com slash BS. And thanks to UntuckIt.com for finally solving one of the biggest problems in men's fashion. Fashionable shirts that are specifically designed to be worn untucked. If you live in Manhattan, go to their store on 129 Prince Street in Soho. And if you don't live in New York, go to UntuckIt.com. Use the promo code BS15 for 15% off all your purchases. And that's 